This is the site of the Battle of the Somme, where almost 20,000 soldiers died on July the 1st, 1916. It was the bloodiest day in the history of the British Empire. Since then, debate has raged over the only combat footage of the battle. Was it real or was it fake? Now, a team of First World War investigators are trying to do what no one has ever done. Use forensic science to solve a mystery trapped on film for 90 years. It, yeah. It's not made up, it's the real McCoy. They're moving forward towards the German front lines, and when you're seeing those people starting to fall, they're actually the men that are being hit. So, yeah. What's the next? Can we watch that next bit? Okay. So this is the actual attack that everybody's seen repeatedly. Yeah. The more you look at that one, the officer has got a stick mm -hmm. and nothing on his back, but no one's got any anti-gas equipment, there are no haversacks, nothing. Well, the, the thing that a veteran pointed out to us while he was still alive is also th this is nothing like a real trench. No, it's this, not. this is kind of just an earth bank. It, it would give you no, no protection against, against anything. anything. The next bit is the significance. Now, he's filming over the top of a sandbag. Yep. He's filming down... This clip showing soldiers crossing a field under fire has been argued over for decades. Was it faked or is it real? Somebody falls, somebody falls. Do you see that again? Yep. Well, no. I must say you're seeing far more detail in this than Look, I, I've yeah. ever had well, watch them again. To me before. Yeah. But... Here they come. They come in far. Now, these men jumped off, by the way, not as we imagine, side by side. They jump off in file, one behind the other, in yeah. Indian file, as they call it. And watch them slowly, and you'll see that they fall. He goes down, he goes down, and I'm pretty certain they've been hit. Yes, they're feeling sheltered by it. If authentic, it's probably the first footage of men falling in battle ever captured on film. But the only way Robert Shaw can prove it is to go to France. And I, I want to go there and say, look, is this correct? Is that the right place? They move on to a sequence filmed the morning of the battle. In the early hours of July the 1st, 1916, soldiers of the Lancashire Fusiliers were sent through a tunnel to a sunken lane right in the middle of no man's land. This scene was filmed only 60 minutes before they got the signal to go over the top. For many, this would be their last hour alive. So where we are now is the very end of this lane. In fact, that, that's the still from Malin's film. Um, it says it's about 6.20, which makes sense. He then says Using Malin's memoirs as a guide, the team think they found where he stood on the sunken lane. He then says, I filmed the waiting fusiliers. Some of them looked happy and gay, others sat with stern, set faces, realising the great task in front of them. Well, you can see quite clearly in the film that some of the men are pretty frightened. Yeah. Uh, others, particularly the trench mortar men, are not quite so... Uh, quite so put out by it because they're not actually going over the top in about three quarters of an hour's time. I mean, you've also got the fact some of these men are glibly veterans. Yes. They know what to expect when they suddenly appear over the Sorry. top of that ridge. Mm. They I, know what's coming. Just, just sit there. Yeah. Just sit down. Just up there. Come here. That'll do. Put your left hand a bit more on your knee. Okay. That's not bad at all. I think he was here. I mean, either way, give us like a few yards. That's pretty good. That's excellent. Good. They have their second match. They know the technique works because the terrain of this area hasn't changed. And for the first time ever, a forensic lip reader will examine the film. The team hopes she'll give voice to those long dead. Deaf since childhood, she is used by police forces around the world to interpret surveillance video, Guns often all working on extremely sensitive cases. But the film's silent and originally it had music with it, and nobody was really bothering, I don't think, about what was being said. But in some sequences, we've got people speaking. You know that they're speaking. Sometimes it's counting, sometimes it's conversation. And because they knew there was no microphone, they're just talking to each other. The quality of film that was shot yeah. before the Second World War can be quite jerky. Yes. Whereas, of course, modern filming, it flows very smoothly. So I just want some. That's the one. Get them up a bit. Get them up a bit. Oh, because he's. It's, I think he's talking to the boxes. Yes, he is, isn't he? He wants the boxes up. Yeah, because he's up got the crowbar, hasn't he, to get the, the get lids them. off. Oh. He said, uh, get them up a bit. Come on then. Check them. Well, they, they are. I mean, that's, yeah. they're checking Which is down what that they're line, doing. aren't they? They are, aren't they? 
That's good. The thing is that, that these men, they're, they're, they've been dead for years, these people, and we've got him actually speaking. Shall we move on then? Because the next one is, is a bit further yeah. in. Two seconds. Here, these. In the back. The, the fat man and the short man. You go, you go. You go. Good. You, you. And then he said to him, yes, that's it, got them all. He said that one to the man beside him, and then to the people in front, he said, go on, go on. Fantastic. OK, and then that one, that one, go on, yes, which we've got. That's great. And then the next one, then, is this one. Get them. Get them. He just, and then we'll go... Could it be fix, then? F-I-X. Yeah, fix them. Yeah, fix. Yeah. So we've got that down as an alternative. Fix and them. And then he says yeah. to him a second later, as he turns around, and then we'll go. And then we'll go. That's incredible. Let's try this one at 2620. Uh, leg injury. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. 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 Yes. I swear. And then Sarge. He needs carrying. He needs carrying. He needs carrying. Mm. <sighs> Anything here? Just go back a few seconds. I hope we're not in the wrong place. Cos <laughs> next time I'm just going to something, something and get out. He's not got the speech of a highly educated person. It's a bit like the speech which well, we, nowadays we yeah. call the, hey, what, yeah. you know, well, I'm he's, bothered. He's a Lancashire man. Ah. He's from Lancashire. So we're not in the wrong place, cos next time I'm going to and get out. Can you see that now? Yes, I can. Oh, yeah. I find that's incredible. Mm. I mean, I wonder if he survived that day, cos well, sadly they were in the right place. And that many of them die in the next hour or so. On July the 1st, 1916, 13 divisions of soldiers, 100,000 men, waited for the signal to attack. At precisely 7.20 in the morning, the battle began with the detonation of a huge underground mine beneath the German front lines. This is the next location that Robert Shaw is trying to match frame. Possibly a mine shard sitting on... If he can find the position that cameraman Jeffrey Malins was filming from, he'll use it to work out where the famous combat footage was shot. Philip Robinson, a former Royal Engineer, is an expert on underground warfare. Well, this group of trees up here, that's the Hawthorne mine. The crater lies just beyond inside the trees. So let's, let's have a look at the, the film now, and right. then we'll just see what we, we've got. When it goes up, it's silent, it's black and white, it doesn't look very dramatic. I mean, how far up in the air does all that stuff go? Probably about six or seven hundred feet, but also dispersing quite widely. The idea was to blow up a huge amount of soil yeah. and create high crater rims, which it was intended should be captured by the second uh, fusiliers. Yes. It would have allowed you to look down into the German trenches on either side and, and bring and fire into them. It goes badly because the Germans respond so quickly rather than anything else. Amazing speed. German soldiers from slightly further back moved in immediately. In 1916, this nondescript hill was considered worth dying for. Well, I suppose the thing is that, that if you're a German soldier, your visibility from here is fantastic, isn't it? Well, here and we'll see, and in that direction, I mean, this has the most fantastic field of fire. I mean, so I... you can see why they wanted to take this position out. Now, it, it's a very, very significant position, and as such, it, of course, it made whatever else you did with it, it made sense to destroy it from underground. Destroy it and, and then seize it, yes. which is the other thing, of course. Well, ideally. Anyway, here you are. Um, pretty big crater. It's an enormous crater, isn't it? 220 feet, if I remember rightly, wow. across it. And the second crater overlaps it. Yeah. 
down here. So it blew out basically that, that whole of that central ridge as well. That's right. So how much explosives? 40,000 pounds. If this was roughly 40 feet depth crater and the mine was 70 feet, so the mine was originally 30 feet below. So Absolutely. obviously if a mass of spoil falls back in on the mine chamber. Yes, and then crushes the whole if thing. If we're thinking about where Malins was, because we saw from the car the yes. explosion up here, he was somewhere back in that lot. And I'm just looking, there are terraces. I wonder if he's on, on that, that Jacob. Standing on the lip of the Hawthorne crater, Robert Shaw now has a clear understanding of where cameraman Jeffrey Malins was working on the morning of the attack. On this small section of the front, he filmed the waiting troops in the sunken lane, the Hawthorne mine explosion, and what may be the first combat footage ever recorded. Malins wrote that after the mine exploded, he swung his camera around and filmed the attack. What we thought was, if we had the trenches marked out with tape, we can then move around on that terrain and try and find it, and if needs be... We'll if Robert Shaw can line up the precise location of the camera when the mine went off, he'll know where Malins filmed the combat scene and be able to prove that it was real. So what you want from us is, is this trench up here... Please. ..and some bits of this one around yeah, here. Yeah, basically that, that, that corner. Should we see if the, uh, see if that's, uh, the historic map fits under? All right. One moment of truth. And that's looking quite good. Look. With the survey points established, the team now knows exactly how the old trench maps fit into the modern topography. They can now mark out the actual trenches. If you look at where the, yep. the line of that, the sandbag for Jacob's Ladder Goes cuts down. the far horizon where the crater now is. Correct. And you come down into here, yep. it's basically there. He's picked it quite carefully, hasn't he? Yeah. To make sure he's safe, which is sensible. Yeah. Can you try right. framing on that now, onto the okay. crater, and see if it makes sense, and then show the others? Because okay. so what we're going to do then, that's our, our shot. Yeah. We need some photographs on it. So what right. we're basically so saying, then... he's here, mm -hmm. 20 past seven in the morning, he films the crater go. Yeah. Yeah. At some point later in the morning, he's then in the same position, he pans to his right. Mm -hmm. Try it. He's then going to pick up figures going from right to left across there, mm -hmm. is live footage. It, yeah. It's not made up, it's the real McCoy. It's people going across and they're moving forward towards the German front lines. And when you're seeing those people starting to fall, they're yeah. actually the men that are being hit. Yes. Whether they're being killed or wounded, but they're falling and they're being hit. And in there, there's an odd edit that comes in, and I think it's because too many men die yeah. or get hit that they edit the sequence out and then pick it up later on when there are more people moving through. And what I'm intrigued so to So in the very moment you get the start of combat photography, you get the start of combat photography censorship. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's a yeah. propaganda film. You don't want to have too many people going, you know, down and laying still. Can you move up to the edge of the ploughed field, please? OK, lads, a single file, a loping run, go. They're about the right size as well, that way. We've just all been killed, which is a slightly spooky sensation, isn't it? <laughs> Merlin's was somewhere just about here on the 1st of July. And it's a culmination, really, of all the research and lots and lots of assistance that means that I can say, that's it, we've done it. And from my point of view, it's great. The Battle of the Somme was meant to be over in a day. It lasted for almost five months. By its end in November 1916, the Allies had advanced six miles and more than one million men were missing, wounded, or dead on the Somme. Who will sing the anthems and who will tell the story? Will the line hold? Will it scatter and run? Shall we at last be united in glory? Only remembered for what we have done. Only remembered.
Only remember